Behind the Shades. Um, I go by Anonymous Andrew. Um, I, and I, I do that um, not so much to hide my anonymity, um, because if you go to my social media, you'll see everything about me. Um, I am a recovering alcoholic, so I go to a 12-step program, and it, uh, it's, so there's an, it's kind of a play in words there. So, you know, it's an anonymous program, but I'm, I'm anything but anonymous. I'm an open book. Um, so, uh, I am, I have a podcast called anonymous Andrew podcast life and the choices we make. And I started this podcast because of a relationship that ended approximately six months ago that went on for two and a half years. Um, and I did not see what, what hit me. It, it was like getting blindsided. Um, I, I don't know if you're ready for me to go into the story yet, but um, so I started this podcast because just like we discussed earlier, I needed to get my story out there because this is happening globally and it's happening. It doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship, if it's a platonic relationship, even even a workplace relationship, workplace gaslighting and and deception and manipulation and narcissism is rampant these days and it's um one one of the biggest takeaways that i've learned from this is that i always had that victim mentality that i was a victim of gaslighting i was a victim of uh cheating and deception and manipulation and just by starting this podcast and talking to so many guests and, and hosts and, and, and having these interviews is I have to shift that thinking. I'm no longer, I don't look at myself as a victim anymore. Um, I, I take, I'm, I try to look at where I went wrong, how, how I can fix it so it doesn't happen again, because this is not the first time that this has happened to me. This has happened to me numerous times. Um, you know, I'm 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 63 years old, and I'm I've lived a full life, and I, I've had a, I've had a marriage, I've had I have children, um, but that was a long time ago. I got divorced young, and I had many 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 relationships since then, and none of them worked. And I, I had to at some point this past relationship really shook me, and it woke me up, and I said, "What am I doing wrong?" Because I can't point the finger at the at my partner. Sure, sure I can because my partner cheated on me, lied to me, gaslighted me, and, and, and but I'm not going to point the finger. I have to take responsibility because it was my choice to stay. It was my and I chose this person. So, um, yeah, I'm 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 learning and growing from this experience, and I'm and I'm and I want to help others. Like you said, there's, there's, there's either men out there who are ashamed, uh, uh, either embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it. Um, I, I'm going to try to bring this to the forefront uh, topic so we can talk about it. it it's real and it's, and, it's, and it's horrible what happens. The trauma is horrible. I know for me, one of the ways that I was able to cope with some of the pain that I went through was to understand why it was happening because I couldn't figure out why me, why was I going through these things? Why couldn't I find maybe some of the love or the companionship that my parents did or my grandparents and their parents and so on? So take us through the beginning, Andrew, and tell us the genesis of this. You mentioned that you got divorced young speak up to us about the divorce and how that put you in a position to maybe repeat or at least experience your last relationship and how that impacted you so i got married at 25 to uh, somebody that i met where i was working um and the instant chemistry and romance ignited um we, we got married we had two children 
but within seven years that relationship just um fell apart um now in, in this case it was due to alcohol and drug addiction both of us were um involved with alcohol and drug drugs so it it just didn't i don't think i have to explain this to the audience it's, it's bad right so um it was at that time i was about 32 at the, the, my first divorce um, I did go in to get help and I, I went into recovery and um, I put about five years of sobriety together. And in, in typical fashion, I started dating again. I, and, and this is one of the patterns that I'm trying to fix. Every relationship that ended, I began a new one within two or three months. I, I just didn't take time to heal. I didn't take time to take a step back and look at what happened, uh, where where I went wrong or why I chose poorly. And then I so I got into another relationship, which became a civil union. So we didn't get married, but we lived together for ten years, and we had a I had another child with this with the second woman, and that also fell apart and i also relapsed i went back to alcohol and drugs during that time um and that took me on a on a tear as we call it i went on a tear for almost 18 years of drinking and drugging um and the if i had to guess in those 18 years i must have had a dozen relationships um and again all of them were just bad I'm going to attribute to all of the failures of those relationships to drugs and alcohol, because most of the women left me because I was a drunk and I, and I was, you know, I was doing drugs. And um, as, as many people know, your partner, if they, if they don't tolerate that. It wasn't until I got clean and sober in 2015 and took it seriously this time that uh, I, I started, again, going into relationships. Um, now, getting sober and going through this 12-step program, what that does is it makes us take a look at why I drank and why I, I did drugs, and, and, and it's a wonderful program, but it doesn't teach you how to be in a relationship. It te teaches you how to heal that inner addiction, that, that, the disease that, that we have. <laughs> I'm gonna go